When it comes to PCs, there's always a new component on the horizon to look out for. The newest GPU with maximum VRAM, or the newest CPU with tons of cores and high clock speeds. But one part that holds it all together and doesn't really get the recognition that it deserves is the motherboard. While being the component that allows for all of your PC parts to talk with one another, motherboards are something that can be neglected when pricing out a custom build. When it comes to shopping for PC parts, the first thing you should always consider is the use case. What am I gonna do with this PC? If you want maximum gaming performance, great video editing features, and the ability to overclock very easily, then you'd want something like the ASUS ROG Strix X870E-E Gaming Wi-Fi Motherboard. This is an ideal motherboard for the newer Zen 5 Ryzen 9000 series of CPUs, but this can also work perfectly with the 7000 or 8000 series AMD CPUs. And with the AM5 socket being supported by AMD for the next few years, you know that this motherboard can have a long lifespan with a newer CPU upgrade down the line. With a motherboard like this, you're getting the best of all worlds for a build that's ideal for gaming, content creation, or power users. With Wi-Fi 7, 5 gigabit ethernet connection, three PCIe Gen 5 M2 slots, dual USB 4 Type-C ports, and the Z870E chipset, which brings everything together. Connectivity is the most important feature to look for with motherboards. Many boards come standard with one gigabit or even 2.5 gigabit, but having a five gigabit ethernet connection makes this an ideal board for the fastest wired connectivity. This is ideal for NAS connectivity, so you're not slowing your file transfers to a crawl over your network. With onboard Wi-Fi 7, you're getting the best wireless speeds paired with the best latencies if you're using a Wi-Fi 7 router. The Q antenna are easy to connect and disconnect, so if you want a wired or wireless connection, Connection, you can get the best of either selection. Now, as long as you have a good connection through your ISP, then you can expect to get the maximum usage from your bandwidth that's possible, which is ideal for lag-free gaming. The USB 4, which are 40 gigabits per second, and these are Type-C ports, they'll deliver bi-directional bandwidth for devices, drives, and even external displays up to 8K. But the I.O. doesn't stop there. With plenty of connectivity with two additional USB-C ports, one 20 gigabit per second with a power delivery of 30 watts and one 10 gigabits per second, plus there's nine USB-A ports. Now, if you're someone like me who finds that there's never enough USB ports, this will give you plenty for all of your peripherals. Now, my PC at home has my mouse, my keyboard, my Wacom tablet, my Stream Deck. I have various external SSD drives and kind of all kinds of other stuff plugged in at all times. So I find myself running out of ports very quickly. Don't forget the front IO as well with connectors for front USB-C 20 gigabit per second, two USB 5 gigabit per second headers, and three USB 2.0 headers, which are going to come in handy if you're doing a lot of fan connectors, AIOs, streamers, things of that nature. Those USB connectors go a long way. With the fastest network and USB connectivity available, it only follows suit to have the fastest PCIe available as well. Now there's Gen 5 PCIe for your GPU, and you can also support up to three Gen 5 PCIe M2 drives. There's also room for two additional PCIe Gen 4 M2 drives, and there's four SATA connectors available as well, though some will be disabled depending on which configuration that you're using. Now, there's another 16X PCIe, which is at Gen 4 speeds, and that's along the bottom here. And you can use that for additional PCIe cards, such as maybe a capture card if you want to use that for streaming, and that'll fit perfectly along the bottom. Aside from the massive connectivity of this motherboard, there's a lot of quality of life features that I really like about these Asus ROG Strix boards. My favorite being the Q latches, which makes installing M2 drives a breeze without the need for a screwdriver. The added Q release for removing the heatsink on one of the M2 ports, as well as the Q slide, which is for easy installation of M2 drives of any size. And these are small little features that go a long way in making the build process easier. I really like that Q slide because I find myself with a lot of extra drives that are at various sizes that aren't 2280. So that's a really nice feature to have. The start button also makes running the board on a test bench easy if you're chasing overclock speed records or if you're testing parts and the clearly labeled Q code dashboard, which will give you code so you'll know what's going on at all times with your board and you'll get a code if there's something going wrong. 
The X870E-E has four DIMM slots supporting DDR5 speeds up to 8,400 mega transfers per second. I always appreciate the very clear labeling of the DIMM slots and the correct configuration for dual memory setups. That's another quality of life thing that keeps you from digging through the manual to check that you're using the right slot. There's robust cooling on the VRMs with an L-shaped heat pipe, high conductivity thermal pads, and massive heat sinks. So you know you're getting the best thermal performance. There's plenty of fan headers, LED headers, temperature sensor headers, and just about everything else you need to maximize your build. And last but not least, the RGB LED features and overall aesthetic of the ROG Strix X870E-E gaming Wi-Fi motherboard make your build not just a monster of a speed machine, but a showpiece on your desk. Now, I'm gonna pair this off with our AMD Ryzen 9 9950X on our testing bench and take this board for a spin, but you can pick yours up at your local Micro Center. And remember, if you don't have a Micro Center near you, to comment hashtag I want a Micro Center near me. Thank you.